What's going on everybody, Dato Doi here with another Dragon Ball Fighters video, and this time we're going to be talking about the Sparking Blast mechanic in Dragon Ball Fighters. Now the reason we're going to be talking about Sparking Blast today is because as most of you know, there is going to be a balance patch coming soon to the game that isn't only going to be focusing on the characters, they've also stated that they're going to be tweaking some of the system mechanics at work in Dragon Ball Fighters. and while that does really excite me because big changes are always something to look forward to, it does also scare me a little because I love most of the system mechanics at work in Dragon Ball Fighters, and the sparking mechanic is one of those. So I thought to fill the time between now and the big balance patch coming soon, i talk about the system mechanics in Dragon Ball Fighters, and talk about what they're used for, how they interact with gameplay at high levels, and just my general thoughts on them. Now, we might be talking about Sparking Blast in this video, but if you want to, feel free to go down in the comments and leave me another system mechanic that you'd like to hear my thoughts on. For now though, like I said, let's focus on the Sparking Blast mechanic. So if it's your first time playing Dragon Ball Fighters and you're going through the tutorial mode, you may get the idea that the Sparking Blast mechanic is something you only use when you're down to your last character and have a lot of blue health that you want to gain back. And while it definitely does serve the role of a comeback mechanic, it also allows for so much more than just blue health regeneration. You can see all of the other aspects Sparking Blast is good for in this really awesome clip. So in this clip, Goichi is playing his friend who's playing Trunks, and as you see, he's in the Sparking Blast mode. And the pressure he's able to put on is ridiculous, and while Trunks does put on decent block pressure normally, he's on a whole nother level when he's in sparking. He's able to jump cancel out of certain things, dash cancel out of other things, and he's able to hold down vanish in order to perform an attack of his choice rather than just the standard kick everybody can perform. He's able to do all of these things because he's in sparking blast mode. So let's talk a little bit about each aspect. So the very first thing you'll see in this clip is him hold down the vanish button in order to stop Trunks from performing the usual standard vanish kick. Because of this, he doesn't whiff his kick and he's actually able to put on block pressure in the first place. So right away, Sparking Blast is already helping him out in a major way. Of course, this isn't the only thing that holding the Vanish button can be useful for. It can also be used for more damaging combos than what you would normally be able to get off, and it's just good for crossing up your opponent on Wake Up. But again, Sparking Blast opens up a lot of possibilities, so there's obviously a lot more you can do with it. The next aspect of Sparking Blast that we see used in this clip is actually the ability to jump cancel out of certain normals that you wouldn't normally be able to jump cancel out of. In this clip, it's actually Trunks' auto combo. As you can see, normally Trunks is supposed to pass through the opponent, but in this clip, he's jump canceling out before that, and it's just really confusing to look at. His model turns into these lines only to reveal that he's actually still right in front of you. And if you aren't paying attention, you're going to get opened up very easily. Now obviously jump canceling out of certain things is just a great benefit all around, so I really don't have to go too into detail about this, but I do think it's important to note. The next area where Sparking Blast helps this player out is actually right after the initial jump cancel, and that is a dash cancel after this key blast. Normally Trunks wouldn't be able to do this, but thanks to Sparking Blast he can, allowing him to put on more pressure and continue to threaten to open up his opponent. Now again, this isn't only for block strings, this also helps out in a lot of combos. Being able to dash out of certain things that you normally wouldn't be able to, allows for some crazy touch of death combos which we'll get to later. That's pretty much all of the aspects of Sparking Blast that we see used in this clip here, but Sparking Blast also has its area in helping out with combos themselves. Sparking Blast acts as a hit so if you get a stray hit and want to spend all of your resources in order to make sure that your opponent's character dies, then you can activate Sparking Blast and set up some insane combos. Again, activating Sparking Blast makes it easier to confirm, so after doing that it's just a matter of applying the principles we've already talked about in order to make sure you pick up that easy kill. Bardock is the character I have the most experience with, and this combo with him is only possible if you have Sparking Blast activated. It's also really easy to convert to because you just use his quarter circle forward light, sends him flying across the screen, and if you see it hit, you just convert into Sparking, and you should be able to pick up the kill from there. With that said, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover about Sparking Blast. It's a mechanic that I think is really fun and has its place in Dragon Ball Fighters, and I wouldn't want to see it touch too much. There are a couple of mechanics that I definitely would like to see get touched up a little, so if you want to hear my thoughts on that, make sure to leave a like and a comment below talking about which system mechanics you'd like to hear me cover. While you're down in the comments, if you like this video and enjoy this channel, make sure you subscribe. My name's Dato Doya, and I'll see you in the next video.